Messaging servers allow server-to-server -server communication across different game servers in real time. The servers can be used for creating a global chat system, global live events, global player bands, or anything that you would like to be shared over all the servers. And in this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can create a global message system so you can send out messages to all players in your game. So before I actually move on with the system, I want to go over how you actually use messaging service or the basics of it. So how we do that is we use subscribe async and publish async. And basically what it, we are doing right here is in here, you can see there's global message. These are the topics, which are the identifiers, um, you know, how we can identify what happens for each topic. So subscribe async basically is we are making the topic global message. So we can, so if we want to publish information to this topic, we can identify that as global message. So when we do want to publish information or send stuff here, then we would use publish async, get global message, which is how we identify it. And then we would send in our data, which here we can send in a table and message, which is a string. And then how we actually get this is in this callback of subscribe async, we can pick that up here. So using this basic functionality is how we can create a global notification or, you know, message system. Let's get into everything you need to create this system. First of all, in replicated storage, I have a global message folder with two remote events called display and fire. And I'm also using Zoopy's remote function module. If you want uh, to have more information on this and why I use it, you can go check out his remote function video about this. So I am going to be using that to replace the regular remote functions of Roblox. And then we have a server script in server script service. And then I have two screen GUIs in starter GUI. One of those being the global text um, screen GUI, which houses the text label that displays on everybody's screen. I have the text transparency set to one just to have a cool effect so we can tween it when we actually see it. And it's just a text label with a UI stroke in it. Nothing too crazy. So I'm just going to not enable that anymore. And then we have this panel here, which I'm not, I'm not going to focus on, you know, any of the UI making. So I already had made this, but I'm, <laughs> I hope you guys can make something that looks pretty good. Um, it's just frame with a few different settings. I just had a scrolling frame cause I took it from another system and I already had a scrolling frame. All you need to know is I have this input frame and then the text box called input. And I also have a send button. So, you know, we type in our message here and then we send it and you know, it all works. And then there's this local script in there. So that's everything we are using for the system. But for now we can disable this panel and we will start working on this local script located under the screen GUI. Okay, so now let's break down everything that we have just put. So obviously here, these are just the basic variables, getting everything that we need, services, the UI components, the remote function, all that sort of stuff. And then we have a debounce and a keys press table, which will allow us to track the keys that the player has pressed. So that allows us to check for multiple key presses. So what we're doing here is when there's input 
checking if the game is processed you know like the game processed event if the player is uh typing in the chat so we're going to make sure that they are not and then we are checking for the keyboard input type and then down here we are basically checking if the keys that we have pressed down which we would find in the table and here's where you can configure um, how you open up the panel now here i have left control g and m which i thought was okay because you know control and then gm uh, stands for global message and then we are checking if the player is allowed to open the panel which we will finish this in the server script but basically we're going to create a table on the server script full of user ids and that's how multiple people um, you can give permission to to be allowed to use this and then we're just resetting the input when uh, the input is ended and then here when we click send checking just one more time if you know we can send it and then we have the debounce we are sending the text that we put in into the uh box oh, i forgot what it was called the uh text box yeah and then waiting 15 seconds before you can send another message so you can't spam it and then display is how we're going to show the text so we're setting the text making it uh making the enabled property true so we can see it and then tweening it uh so it looks nice and i also included a uh color correction tween so you can just insert a color correction in your lighting and that'll make it just make the background look dark uh but if you don't want to do that you can change it you know however else you want to display it you can do that here and then waiting or yeah waiting two seconds and then we no longer see it so that's basically the client script done we can move on to the server script Okay guys, so this is the server script done. Again, we're getting similar variables up here and then we are getting that same uh, remote function and getting it by saying user ID. Here is where we are allowing these certain people to actually open up the panel. So right here is my user ID and then you, know, you can add more by copying this and then putting in uh, other user IDs, but since Usually I'm working by myself. I just put mine in there. And then here is where we would check our user IDs like from what we did here in the local scripts. And then we are using subscribe async. Once again, like I mentioned earlier, global message and then firing to all clients the message. Now here you guys might get a little confused because it says message.data.message. Well, what this means is message is you know the message as a whole but if we want to get the data of that then we would say data so message.data is what did i <laughs> that, wait did i actually delete this hold on okay i might have deleted that but basically where i was is message.data would be this table right here and then we would say dot message because message is you know one of the keys in the table so once you guys have published your game to the website, you can then go into it. And then if we use our key binds that we said in the script, so if I hold down control and then GM, you see the global message panel pops up here. And then in here we can type whatever we want. Like I can say, hi. And if we click send, there we go. We see our message and you can see it says from Stewie Fing, the background goes dark. And after 10 seconds, it will go away just like that. So one of the ways you could test this if, you know, you don't have very many people playing your game or it's harder to test. What I did is I set my test game to have one person uh, server size. So then I published the game. I got my main account into a server and I also got my alt account into a server. And then I, you know. I published the message here and then I'll I seen that my alt account also seen it so that is how I tested it without having a game you know with 
hundreds of thousands of players in it. So that is a good way that you can test it. So just to make sure this actually works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a one here, which means a Roblox. The Roblox account is going to allow it to open the panel and then I'm going to publish this and then rejoin and see what happens. So now that we are back in an updated server, if I hold down control GM, we see that the panel doesn't pop up, which means we do not have permission to open it. And since we are checking uh, everything on the server side, this means that hackers or exploiters cannot spoof their identity or make themselves somebody that they are not. So uh, using the server, can return back that user ID using the remote function module and everything works fine. If you guys have any questions on the system, go ahead and ask me down below. And if you guys did enjoy this video or you guys learned something from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.